with over a million animal species on our earth, it would be difficult to categorize them into different groups. However, with the help of basic fundamental features such as level of organization, symmetry, cell organization, nature of coelom, segmentation and knot accord, scientists have classified animals into various groups. Let's understand each of these basic fundamental features in detail. Level of organization is the first basic fundamental feature that deals with the pattern of cell organization in an animal. There are four patterns of cell organization. Cellular, tissue, organ and organ system. Sponges exhibit a cellular level of organization where cells are loosely arranged. Tissue level of organization is more complex and is displayed in cellenterates. Here, the cells that perform the same function are arranged into tissues. Organ level of organization is exhibited in members of platyhelminthes and other higher phyla. Here the tissues are grouped to form organs and each organ performs a particular function. The last cell pattern is the organ system level of organization. Here the organs are associated with one another to form a functional system where each system performs a specific physiological function. Animals like Annelids, arthropods, mollusks, echinoderms and chordates exhibit this level of organization. Organ systems can also differ in complexity in various animal groups. For example, platyhelminthes have an incomplete digestive system where a single opening outside the body serves as both the mouth and the anus. Whereas humans have a complete digestive system that has two openings, a mouth and an anus. You will also find two types of circulatory systems in animals, open and closed. Symmetry is another feature by which animals are classified. They can be asymmetrical, like sponges, or have radial symmetry, like cellenterates, tenophores, and echinoderms. However, most animals like annelids and arthropods have bilateral symmetry. Cell organization is the next feature used for classification. There are two types of cell organization, diploblastic and triploblastic. Cylenterates have diploblastic organization, where the germinal layers of the cell consist of an external ectoderm and an internal endoderm. Members from phylum platyhelminthes to chordates have triploblastic organization where a third germinal layer, the mesoderm, is found between the ectoderm and the endoderm. The fourth important feature by which animals are classified is the nature of coelom. The coelom is the body cavity lined by mesoderm. The presence or absence of this cavity helps classify animals. There are three categories, coelomates, acelomates, and pseudocelomates. Coelomates are animals that possess a body cavity, such as annelids, mollusks, anthropods, echinoderms, 
hemichordates and chordates. Acelomates are animals in which the body cavity is absent, such as platyhelminthias. Pseudocelomates are animals that possess a pseudocelum, such as askhelminthias. A pseudocelum is a body cavity in which the mesoderm is not lined, but rather scattered between the ectoderm and the endoderm. Some animals are also classified on the basis of segmentation. The body of some animals can be divided externally and internally into segments. Sometimes, the segments in animals have serial repetition of some organs, which is seen in earthworms. This phenomenon is known as metamerism. One of the most important features for animal classification is the presence or absence of a notochord. Some animals develop a rod-like structure on the dorsal side during embryonic development, which is known as the notochord. Animals with a notochord are called chordates, while animals without a notochord are called non-chordates. Members of phylum Porifera to echinoderms are non-chordates. We just studied how we can classify animals into different categories on the basis of some fundamental features.